Hello guys and welcome to another video. My name is Johan. I post videos about my animals. So if you want to see more animal related content and hopefully more top five videos like this one, this is my first top five video ever. So I plan on doing a lot more of those. So if you want to see more of that, consider hitting that subscribe button for more videos. But in this video, like I said, this is going to be my first top five video. And I figured that would be fitting to do a top five of the best beginner tarantulas because I have a lot of tarantulas. And in the list, it's only going to be spiders I actually keep. But when I was trying to research for other spiders, I couldn't really find any. So these are definitely my top five for beginners. And the five spiders that are in this video is not really the most common species that you see in these types of videos. So really stay for the whole video to see all the spiders that I suggest. And hopefully that will give you some ideas of what spider you should get next. But just before I start off the list, I really want to put a note in there that I have excluded all Brachypelma species for the only reason that all my Brachypelma species, I know there's other species that don't do it, but all mine, they're really, really prone to kick their hairs. And if you're new to spiders, there are old worlds and there are new worlds. And most new worlds, they have something called irritating hairs. And that is actually hair that they can flick off the abdomen. Well, most of them have it on their abdomen. And you can get sores, you can get blisters. It's just not a good time. So you don't want a beginner species to do that. So I have excluded all the Brachypelma species. The other thing I have excluded is most arboreal, well, all arboreal species, because all, in my opinion, beginner species for arboreal, they require a lot of ventilation. And as a beginner, it's hard to get that right. There is a beginner called Carabana Versicolor. I can't really pronounce the scientific name, so I'm gonna put it on the screen. But that spider is, could be a good beginner, but I killed two of them as a beginner. And I killed them because I didn't have the proper ventilation. Well, at least that's what I think. So that's why i kind of shy away to put those on the list so i have excluded all the boreal species i have excluded all the brachypelma species so all those species is going to be off this list so this list is basically just going to be terrestrial species like species that live on the ground and they're going to be new worlds but enough said about that let's actually jump into the real reason why we're here which is to find out my top five spiders and these are in order so the number five on the list is the lacedora paribana and I don't know if I pronounced that right, so I'm gonna put it on the screen. And if you're new to spiders, and if you don't know the scientific names, that is the Brazilian Salmon Pink Bird Eater. And pros to get this as a beginner is that they grow huge. They grow really, really big. That's one of the biggest spiders that you can actually get. And if you're new to spiders, you wanna get that big bulky spider, this is the spider for you. Another pro is that they grow fast. They grow to that big spider really, really fast. And compared to other species, if you get a sling, it's gonna take forever before it actually grows to the size that you can actually show it off to your friends. Look at my big spider, you know? So the El Paribana is a great species if you wanna get that big spider and you wanna get it quick. Another good thing about these spiders is that they are very, very available. I think the females can have up to 4,000 babies. So you do the math, they're easy to find. That also means they're cheap. So they're cheap, they're easy to find, and they grow fast. And another thing that is good about this species is the care. The care is pretty simple. This is a species that like it more humid, but you can reach that humidity by just placing a bigger water bottle in there. And you wanna keep that lower substrate damp, like a little bit wet. Not like the when you squeeze it that it drips water, it's just gonna be damp because if the spider wants more humidity, it can just dig down into the burrow and there's gonna be more humid down there. But there's also some cons about this species. Like I said, it grows big. That can actually be a con. If you're new to spiders and you don't want that big spider that quick, you wanna grow with it slowly and get used to it, this might not be the best spider for you. You have to do the math as well. A big spider, big thanks. This is not a very venomous spider. If it will bite you, the bite will probably hurt more than the venom, but you don't wanna get bit by things like this. Okay, maybe not that big. You know what I mean, they're big. You don't wanna get bit. And another thing that you wanna keep in consideration is that this is a spider that can be, at least two of mine have been, they can be a bit skittish. So when they get skittish, they can actually kick some hairs. And this species has really, really bad hurricane hairs. And to me, I haven't really noticed it because it's different from person to person. But I heard some people get really bad blisters when they get haired by the El Paribana. So yeah, that can be con. So that is my number five. Moving on to my number four, 
which is a species that is not really common where I live, but it's more common in US because the spider actually come from US. It lives in the wild there, so it's more common there. And if you haven't guessed what species it is, it is the Aphonopelma calcotis. And I don't know if I pronounced that right either, so I'm putting the names on the screen as always. But that is also known as the Desert Blonde Tarantula, I think it is. And this spider, I have heard different stories about. I heard that some can actually have spiders that are like really psycho. And I've heard that other people have calcotis that are super docile and super shell. It is a spider that is super easy to care for. You basically just put a water dish in there, give it some substrate and you're good to go. Overfill that water bowl every once in a while and you're gonna have a happy spider. So they're super easy to care for. They're docile, like I said. They are very slow moving. They have early carrying hairs, but they never use it. Like mine never kick this hair. I know other people have species that kick their hairs, but mine haven't. So for me, that's definitely a good beginner species. But moving on to the cons, this is a species that can be expensive. Here in Europe, they are really rare to find. I don't know how it is in US, but I think they are pretty expensive there too. And I think that's related to another con, which is that this spider grow super, super slow. It's one of the most slow growing spiders. It's gonna take years before your spider grow up to like be a big bulky spider. So that's probably one of the reasons why the price get bumped up a little bit. So that's definitely a con for me. And another thing that goes hand in hand with that is that since the spider grows slow, you will get those long pre-mold times. So it's gonna take a while before the spider actually wants to eat. And I think mine has been like eating like three times in a year. So if you want a spider for the reason that you wanna feed it, um, this is not the spider for you. It's not gonna eat that much for you. It's gonna grow slow, long pre-molts. But again, there was a lot of pros with this one as well. So I'm just putting out the cons and the pros so you can make your own decision what you would like. Moving on to the third tarantula on this list, which is one of my favorite species of tarantula, solely because just the look of it. So this spider is gonna have a huge pro just because how it looks, in my opinion. And if you wanna guess what spider it is, it's about time to guess because I'm about to reveal it. It is the Gramostola pulchra. Put it on the screen. Thank you. And that is the Brazilian black tarantula, I think it is. And that is definitely one of my favorites because it's all black. All black. It's so cool. But there's obviously other pros with this species because otherwise it would have been my third favorite beginner species. And the other pros are that this is a docile species, in my opinion. In my experience, it is a slow moving species that rarely kick their hairs, at least from my experience. It is also a species that should be pretty easy to find. At least where I look, I will see the Gramostola pulchra somewhere. So the only thing that is with this species is it can be a bit pricey, depending where you look. So that's definitely a con with this species, but that's pretty much the only con I can find about this species. I mean, they grow pretty slow, so I guess that can be a con as well, but with all the pros and that they're actually really easy to care for. Like again, you just put the water dish in there, give it some dirt, overfill the water dish every now and then, and you're all set. So super easy to care, only cons, they grow slow and they can be expensive. So pretty good beginner species, in my opinion. But moving on to the second tarantula on my beginner tarantula top five list is, I don't think a lot of people have this on their list to be honest, but mine is a spider with a lot of cons and with a lot of pros. And the spider is the Homonoma chilensis, the Chilean flame tarantula. Put it on the screen because I can't pronounce it. Thank you. Anyways, I'm gonna start with the cons on this spider because I think the pros are gonna overweigh it, but the cons are really bad, in my opinion. But this is a spider that is expensive. It's really expensive. And the reason why it's expensive is because they are super rare. At least where I live, I heard where I'm in Europe. And I also heard that they're really rare in US. They're hard to find. But if you can find it, okay, let's not go into the pros yet. Keep going with the cons. They're expensive, they're hard to find, they grow really slow, which means they eat rarely, and they have long pre-molds. So basically my sling, which I probably showed some footage of already, which is really small, before this molt that she has molted, I think she ate two, maybe three times, like really, really small dubai roaches. So, and that was like in a year. So yeah, they rarely eat, they're really slow growers, expensive, hard to find, whatever. And the last con, is that this is a dwarf species. And that can be a pro, that can be a con. I'm, I'm gonna put mine on the cons because if you want a beginner tarantula, you're probably 
getting into the hobby because you want a big spider. So that could be a con, but let's move on to the pros. So the first pro is that they are super easy to care for. They are very, very forgiving. You, can, you, can, you can't kill these guys. Like, give them water and they're good to go. So yeah, you need to give them water, obviously. But they're, they care super easy, put a water dish in there, and that's all they need. Obviously, you want to decorate the enclosure and give it like enough substrate and all that stuff. But they're very forgiving if you don't. So the care is super, super, super easy. Number two, they are probably the most docile species that you can ever find. At least in my opinion, they're they are mine. I can't I can't explain it. It's like even if he was like the bigger spider I can ever imagine, I wouldn't even hesitate. Just put my hand there. He's like so nice. His body language is super easy to read. Yes amazing and i heard other people have similar experiences with their species so yeah again this is my experience but i also heard it from other people so that's why i think that is a good species for a beginner other pros about this species is that it's a species that is very slow moving you will be able to catch it wherever it goes it can't really walk away from you obviously it can bolt but i, I never seen my bolt so and another thing that is really good is that they never kick their hairs. They have irritating hairs, but yeah, I, can, I never see mine do it. Uh, so yeah, they, they're never defensive. So that's also very perfect for a beginner keeper. So that's why I want to keep this spider as my number two on my top five list. And now we're at the final spider of the list, which is my opinion of the best trash line that you can ever get as a beginner. And that spider, we're gonna wait to say what that is because first, if you're still watching this video, like the video. If you liked it, only if you liked it because otherwise don't like it. But if you like it, if you're still here, like the video. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this or more animal related videos. Sorry for that plug, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But let's move on to the first on this list, which is the T abulpulosum and i'm not gonna say that name more than that because i can't pronounce it so i'm gonna put it on the screen i can say the common name though it's the curly hair tarantula it is the best beginner by far in my opinion as a beginner tarantula and the reason why is because this spider is so easy to care for you can basically put it on dry substrate or fill the water dish every now and then and you're good to go like most other species on this list but this one is very very forgiving so you're not going to be able to kill this spider. It's, it's a great beginner species. It grows to a pretty big bulky spider and it doesn't grow that slow. This species used to be in the Brachypelma genus and most Brachypelma species grow really slow. This species though grows, I'm not going to say a lot quicker, but it grows faster than most Brachypelma. So you will have a big bulky spider quicker than what you would with like the normal Brachypelma species. So that's definitely a pro for me. Other pros with this species is that this species is very, very easy to find, which also makes this species very cheap. A lot of times when you order spiders, you would get this species as a freebie because people just want to give it away. It's really easy to get your hands on a curly hair tarantula. And the last pros for this species is that this species is a very docile species, at least in my opinion. And they're very slow moving. They're not going to run away from you. And the last thing that is also very good is that they won't really use their irritating hairs to kick. And that's also from my experience. So it's a very good pro that they don't really use their irritating hairs. And from what I heard, don't take my word for this, is that their hair from the curly hairs are not that bad if you actually get it on them. But again, it's different from people to people. I can be super sensitive and you cannot. So you never know until you actually get hair done. So I know people that can't even be in a room where there's new world tarantulas. That's how sensitive you can get. And I also heard that you can get more and more sensitive the more you're exposed to the hairs. So yeah, keep that in mind. Just try to stay away from them. Even though if you're not sensitive, just stay away from it because it can actually get worse. Now I said all the pros about the curly hairs. There are some cons about the species that I need to mention as well. And that is that this species is a semi burrowing species. It likes to dig down a bit. And that means that you might not be able to see it all the time because it might be down in its den. Also in my experience, my curly hair is not that food aggressive. For my opinion, I really like to feed my spiders. So it kind of sucks that I can't get the curly hair to be more aggressive but I guess that can be a personality thing. There might be other curly hairs that are more food aggressive, but mine is not. 
So that is the two cons. They can burrow and they don't really eat that much. So that's all the cons for this species. Two. And how many pros were there? Like 10? So yeah, definitely the best beginner in my opinion. Anyways, that is my list. If there are species that I missed out, which I probably did because this list got to be a bit different, at least from the videos I've seen of top five videos. So if you really think that I missed a species that should be on this list, comment it down below. And if you like the list, you can also comment that because I, I'm really interested to know what you guys that are watching right now think about this list. But this is, if I got to choose whatever beginner species I would choose, this will be the spiders and this will be in this order. So hopefully this video was a bit different also because that might also give you some ideas what spiders you can buy next instead of just watching other videos that usually feature the same spiders. So yeah. But yeah, I really hope you liked that video. Let me know in the comments what you think about what I just said earlier. Also, don't do that if you don't want to. Leave a comment about whatever you want because I love reading those comments. Leave the video if you liked it and I will see you in the next video. Thank uh you. -huh.